President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris are hitting the road to tout their administration's accomplishments during their first 100 days in office. Joining us now to talk about that and much more, White House Communications Director Kate Bedingfield. Kate, welcome back to the program. Appreciate your time. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, let's talk about some of these recent polls. They've actually found that Americans do, in fact, support the president's infrastructure and families plan, as well as, you know, the tax increase that he wants to pay for them by nearly two to one margins. And a lot is being said, though, about how President Biden's message last night is actually shifting the Democratic Party back towards, you know, the big proposal era of FDR and LBJ and away, as I was mentioning, from presidents like former President uh, Bill Clinton. With public opinion on your side, Kate, is, is the so-called era of big government back? The way President Biden thinks about this is that this is about rebuilding people's faith in their government and in democracy. Uh, he believes this is about rebuilding people's faith in the government's ability to help them, to make their lives better. That's what these investments that he's proposing are all about. That's what the jobs plan's all about. That's what the families plan's all about. These are investments that are going to create middle class jobs in this country that are going to uh, he's put forth a proposal for 12 weeks of paid leave, which, you know, anybody out there working parent uh, or someone working with an, an elderly uh, parent, you know how important that paid leave is. These are investments that are about making people's lives better. And he's really, um, you know, he, he's really saying government has a role to play here um, and it's important and it's imperative for him as president. He views it as a responsibility of his as president to try to uh, begin to rebuild that faith that's been lost between people and their government. So that's what these investments are about. Uh, and that's what he's out uh, today in Georgia talking about and making his case directly to the American people, as you saw him do in the speech last night. You obviously, uh, you know, as you just mentioned, this is a, 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 an investment in the American people. The president last night referred to it as a once in a generation investment in America itself. Uh, is this an acknowledgement that this year may provide the only chance for this president to try and get something approved by Congress? I think he views this much more as being about seizing this moment that uh, the, the pandemic, the crisis that the pandemic has created, this opportunity that we have in front of us to really uh, rework our economy so that it's actually working for working people and for middle class families. And that's what you're seeing in these proposals that he's putting forward. These are investments in roads and bridges, in broadband to ensure that, you know, as we saw across the course of this year, it became uh, even harder for kids who were virtually, who were trying to learn virtually virtually to connect to their classrooms if they didn't have good broadband. So he's putting forward these investments that are really critical to making people's lives better and to making our economy more competitive. I think that's the other piece of what he's saying about, you know, we have a once in a generation opportunity to reclaim our leadership on the world stage and really invest in our economy so that we're creating jobs now with these investments, but we're also creating jobs for the long haul. We're creating jobs as we move forward. We are in making an investment in our workers so that right. we can once again lead the world. Some of the opposition on the price tag is coming from within the Democratic Party. As we just mentioned there, Senator Joe Manchin, is the president willing to, to put more pressure on members of his own party to, to get on board with his proposal? Well, Senator Manchin has been an important partner to us and we hope will be as we're moving forward. I think what the president's going to do is make his case. He's going to do exactly what you saw him do last night when he was uh, speaking to the joint session and what you're seeing him do in Georgia today and what you'll see him do as he travels to Pennsylvania tomorrow and to Virginia on Monday. He's going to make his case directly to the American people. And I think what we're seeing from the American people is these are investments they want. You know, you referenced polling at the top of our segment here. But, you know, what we see is overwhelmingly people want to see investments in making their roads better and making their bridges stronger and creating these good paying union jobs in, in communities all across the country. People are looking for that. The president's going to continue to make his case. He's going to keep his head down, keep working to try to achieve that. Another issue that has drawn some uh, consideration is immigration. Arizona Democratic Senator Mark Kelly, as you are aware, put out a statement last night in which he actually said that uh, about the president's address, while I share President Biden's urgency in fixing our broken immigration system, what I didn't hear tonight was a plan to address the immediate crisis at the border. Let me pose that question to you. Will the president uh, reach out to Senator Kelly? And, and when can we expect the White House to unveil a plan to deal with the increasing number of migrants arriving at the southern border? 
You know, I'm really glad you asked this question because I think there has been tremendous progress at the border, and I think it's important for people to hear. So what we've seen is that the number of kids who are in Border Patrol custody, which is the thing that you know a lot of the media was, was focused on over the course of February and March, the number of kids in these Border Patrol facilities, the number of kids was in mid-March at about 5,000. And now, as of this week, it's under 1,000. The Biden administration has moved quickly to move these kids out of Border Patrol facilities. Uh, we're now the average time that a kid is spending in a Border Patrol facility is now under 50 hours, uh, which is down dramatically from where we were a couple of months ago. So the administration has moved quickly to move these kids out of the most dangerous part of this process and being in the overcrowded uh, Border Patrol facility and into HHS facilities that are in and of themselves temporary facilities. And we're working to reunite, uh, or I should say to unite, those kids with family members in the United States, with sponsors in the United States. So we've made tremendous progress uh, on the situation at the border. Obviously, there's a lot more to do. And I think what you heard from President Biden in the speech last night is his commitment to the long-term solution here. He wants to see Congress come together and move on a comprehensive immigration reform bill. He wants to move on DREAMers. He wants to move on TPS. I mean, these are things that we can uh, do to make our immigration system uh, better, to create a pathway to citizenship for people who are in this country, hardworking, uh, uh, undocumented folks who are in this country contributing to our economy. So he wants to see uh, the Congress make uh, move forward and, and work towards solutions on this. I wanted to, before uh, we go, ask you about a new report that the federal government is investigating at least two possible incidents of invisible energy attacks on U.S. soil in the past couple of years, uh, similar to ones on U.S. personnel both in China and Cuba. The White House said in a statement that it is working closely with departments and agencies to address unexplained health incidents and ensure the safety and security of Americans serving around the world. What is the White House communicating to staffers who are concerned about possibly being the victim of one of these attacks? So, of course, we would take any uh, threat like this, any situation like this, very seriously. As you saw from the statement, we are working to uh, investigate. We have our agencies are working to get to the bottom of this. We take any threat to the potential safety of somebody working for the United States government seriously. So we are we are working to get to the bottom of this. We are uh, communicating directly with staff who may be impacted to let them know that there are resources available to them. We are uh, you know we want to make sure they understand that we take this seriously. Um, so that's that's what we're doing. We are uh, we are working to make sure that they have the resources that they need from us and that we are undertaking this, these investigations to get to the bottom of what's happening. All right. White House Communications Director Kate Benningfield, thank you so much for your time. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.